the brass serpent on the pole, and you're never going to believe what you're about to hear. Asclepius, the god of medicine, 5th century, holding the staff. And look at it. It's the rod of Asclepius, the god of medicine. And my friend, it has a serpent on it, and it becomes what? It becomes the medical alert. Now listen to me, it's 5th century. The story of the brass serpent on the pole that we read about in the Bible is in circulation long before Asclepius. God brought healing. How? By telling Moses, put a serpent on a pole. And what lesson can we learn from that story? Well, we can see it in the New Testament with the words of Jesus, because it all points to Jesus. Nehustan, it literally means the cursed. And it literally is speaking of what the Apostle Paul was talking about, that Christ our Lord was made a curse for us. You can see Egypt all the way at the end there, can't you? Well, on their way out of Egypt, 10 times the nation of Israel badgered, complained so much and behaved so ungodly that finally God sent serpents. Now, listen very carefully. God was going to let those people die, but Moses pled for them. So the Lord said, put a serpent on the pole and all the people have to do is believe and I'll heal them. Listen very carefully. Right out of nowhere is a simple but large, powerful Bible verse in John chapter 3 that references the brass serpent on the pole. In the book of Numbers, the people looked and they believed, and God healed them. And Jesus said, just as that serpent was lifted up, if you look as the Son of Man is lifted up and believe, God will forgive you and heal you. That's the principle of Nehustan. It literally means the curse, I told you. One who's punished in your place. So you see, I can't make it easy for you. You have to look at it yourself. Jesus was made sin for us so that we can be forgiven. Listen carefully. I just want to share with you a simple John chapter 3 Bible lesson. First, Jesus is speaking to a religious leader and he says he needs to be born again. And then God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. You know the baseball verse. That whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. What does that word mean to believe? Well, look at verse 14. The brass serpent on the pole. Well, how were they healed? They looked up. They believed. They were healed. Jesus is lifted up on the cross, not religion. And the Bible gives you this promise. Look to Jesus. Realize you're a sinner and ask him to save you. It's that simple. There's no magic words. Here's a simple way. Lord, I know I'm a sinner and I know you died for me. I want to ask you to forgive me right now and I want to make you my savior. Thank you. I'm glad I'm going to heaven because of what you did. And now can you help my life to look more like yours? In Jesus' name. And that's it, my friend. Go read John chapter 3 and look at verse 14 and ask yourself what it means to believe. <laughs> you trust and you have confidence in what God says. Whosoever believes on him has, it's present tense, everlasting life. Have a nice day, Malachi. Another, another, Kai little guy, Kai little guy, Kai little guy.